Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Crypto market here not seeing too much movement. Market cap at 273.6. Bitcoin trading at 96.25, down 0.75%. Ethereum trading at 241, approximately down 0.98%. And guys, XRP back in the number four spot, trading at 0.202 cents, down 0.64%. Uh, same story for most of the crypto space. We're seeing mostly red in the space today. Like I said before, not too much happening. This is XRP on the daily. Uh, let's bring up Bitcoin real quick here. Same kind of pattern. We're just trading sideways. And we have been for the last little while, since uh, probably about a month now. Bitcoin's got to breach this top, and it's anybody's guess. If we can break 10,500, chances are we will move to 14,000. That is the next stop for Bitcoin, the all-time high last year. Before it started to plummet, before it made its way down during the latter half of the year. But if we cannot breach this top, it is looking like we will fall back into a level of demand and guys, this is the story of crypto. Ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. It was never a straight line when we got to 20,000 back in 2017. You gotta remember the bull rally was full of ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. 2015 saw a significant surge. After a couple of years of downward momentum, Bitcoin hit $500 per BTC. And pretty much instantly after that, went under $300 once again. It did not see that high of $500 until May 2016, so six months later. Uh, and this is par for the course, guys. It's a volatile space. Cryptocurrency has been notorious for this. And this is why if we want thousands of percentage points and gains, we need to be patient and we need to expect deep cuts, deep crashes along the way. Now, I saw this article uh, from the Daily Hodel and uh, venture, okay, so it starts off by saying, venture capitalist predicts Bitcoin boom to 150,000 per BTC. And he says Ethereum, though, and four other altcoins will outperform Bitcoin. Now, full disclosure here, not one of these altcoins mentioned was XRP. But I'm going to read this for you guys, and I want to get your opinion on this. Venture capitalist Simon Dedek says that while he believes Bitcoin will put together a face-melting rally in the next bull run, he sees five altcoins outshining the leading cryptocurrency. In a recent tweet, Dedek says he expects the crypto market to launch another bull market, but warns that the rising tide will not lift all boats. The founder of the digital asset intelligence firm Blockfire predicts that Bitcoin will soar nearly nearly 15,000% to 15 or rather $150,000 in the new bull cycle, but unlike the peak of the 2017 crypto bull market when many altcoins generated gains of over 1,000%, the Blockfire executive believes only a handful of altcoins will print potentially life-changing gains. Here are his coins. So he says Ethereum, he expects the second largest cryptocurrency to skyrocket to $9,000, an increase of 3,650%. He predicts Chainlink, L-I-N-K, trading right now at $4.34, will surge over 4,500% to $200. He believes Binance Coin will surge to $500, posting a gain of more than 2,700%. And VeChain, VET, V-E-T, he predicts, will rise almost 15,000% from its current price of 0 0.006 cents to $1. And so I have my thoughts about uh, these particular cryptocurrencies. Uh, I know a lot of you guys have, have asked me why I don't do VET and link videos, for example. And the reason is simple. It's not because I dislike those coins particularly. It's just I have limited time in a day and uh, they haven't been on my radar, but they're becoming to register on my radar more and more frequently as the months go on. Uh, sorry, I missed this one here. Wrapping up the venture capitalist list is Tezos XTZ, which he predicts a 6,700% as it climbs to $200. That's his prediction for Tezos. So, I wanted to reach out to you guys and ask you guys, Link VeChain, in one sentence, can you give me an explanation as to why you like Link or why you like VeChain or why you like Tezos? Ethereum, I'm not so interested in because I do know quite a bit about that and Binance Coin as well. My opinions on these cryptocurrencies doing well in the next crypto run is that I could see this prediction come true out of sheer FOMO and sheer exposure on Twitter and from Google and many other social media outlets. The more... Uh, a cryptocurrency is in somebody's face, the more likely, especially in a panic, bull run, FOMO, fear of missing out kind of way, people are likely to invest. So in one sentence, can you explain to me why you love VET or why you love LINK or why you love Tezos? 
I want to continue on here though, guys. Uh, Michael at Val Five Links on Twitter. No excuses. By now, there should be no problem. So this is Coinbase's uh, reaction to why there was an outage when Bitcoin soared past $10,000. When Bitcoin surged to around 10,000 on Monday, June 1st, things weren't rosy at Coinbase as its servers went down, leaving many investors and traders furious for not having the chance to capitalize on the golden opportunity to trade. So what caused the outage? According to Coinbase, the rise of Bitcoin's price led to a five times increase in traffic on the exchange within four minutes and the exchange's auto-scaling system couldn't handle the situation. In effect, the trading system was overwhelmed, leading to the creation of a backlog, and this caused new server requests to be dropped or timed out as they lasted in the queue. At this point, the server downtime error rate shot to 50%. So they have an auto exchange or an exchange auto-scaling system, and it actually couldn't handle a five times increase on their servers. Now, if they plan to do business in the next bull run, I don't see how they can do so efficiently if they continue to have these problems of traffic increases by only 5x. That is pathetic and unacceptable uh, if I were a trader using Coinbase. I'm sure a lot of you guys have the same opinion. Thanks so much, Michael, for posting that. And Pablo Escobar and Satoshi Nakamoto. Have you heard about the connection? That's right, guys. Meet Yasutaka Nakamoto, a drug runner for Pablo Escobar brother of Dorian Nakamoto, and possibly the real creator of Bitcoin. A new theory regarding the true identity of anonymous Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto has emerged from an extremely unlikely source. Enter the Escobar family and their story about Yasutaka Nakamoto. The story goes like this. Yasutaka Nakamoto was a high-ranking engineer for Pacific West Airlines who worked for Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar, smuggling drugs into the U.S. from South America. Yasutaka disappeared completely from public view in 1992 after surviving an assassination attempt by his former employer. He then resurfaced years later to create the launch of Bitcoin, as the theory goes. He is also supposedly the brother of Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto. At least that's the story we're hearing from uh, Olaf Guftas, Gus, uh, sorry, Gustafsson, CEO of Escobar, Inc., the multinational holding company associated with Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar. Gustafsson is the 27-year-old Swedish entrepreneur who started his first business at age 13. Gives a little bit about him. So why are we hearing this story now? In a recent phone call with Cointelegraph, Gustafsson relayed this fantastical version of events in an effort, he says, to silence some of the fear created by self-proclaimed Satoshi Nakamoto Craig Wright. <laughs> I didn't get to that part of the article yet, but that's really funny. According to Gustafsson, Yasutaka's position as the head engineer for Pacific West Airlines made him the perfect insider for Pablo Escobar's drug smuggling operations, where commercial pilot Barry Seal, played by Tom Cruise in the film American Maid, had previously delivered drugs to Escobar. Yasutaka could continue to carry the torch, thanks largely to the unrestricted access afforded him uh, in his role at the airline, says Gustafsson. More info about uh, Yasutaka's public profile down here. Um, it's an interesting theory, and it uh, totally makes sense if you guys think about it. Who better to come up with an alternative currency than somebody in the drug trade whose main priority is to launder money from the illicit sale of drugs? And if you have somebody that intelligent who is able to create a currency out of thin air. So here's where it makes sense to me. If this guy was in the drug trade and he saw the need to launder money, it would only make sense, especially if he had the knowledge to create a blockchain, if he was that kind of an intelligent kind of coder type of guy, it would only make sense for him to create an alternative currency that would have value that would be able to do so. Now, the problem with this is that when you create a currency, it has to have value and other people have to agree that it has to have value. So for Bitcoin, that happened over time. Uh, but this is an interesting theory here, a potential Bitcoin tie to the Pablo Escobar drug trade learning from his 1980s drug trafficking ring and then realizing, hey, there's a better uh, there's a better way to transfer value through something that I'm going to create called cryptocurrency. The funniest part about this is, is that he came out and he basically just wanted to do it to say, no, Craig Wright is not Satoshi Nakamoto. It is I, Yasutaka Nakamoto, who is the real Satoshi Nakamoto. Anyway, moving along. Uh, so our money exchange recommends a handful of digital assets going live on June 15th. They are saying that even though there are over 5,000 cryptocurrencies, our money recommended only the following to be bought, traded, exchanged, or hodled in India. And they recommend Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, USDC, which is a uh, stable coin, 
LTC and XRP. Our money recommended XRP because it is an institutionalized cryptocurrency used by institutions for cross-border payments within minutes. The most advanced blockchain technology that has now been adopted by many banks, corporations, and institutions. Our money users will be able to trade XRP with BTC and the Indian rupee, the INR pairs. So our money now suggesting that uh, people within India hodl or trade only a handful of cryptocurrencies and XRP now added on the list. A trusted cryptocurrency in their eyes. This is great news coming out of the XRP RK. Thanks so much, Leonidas, for posting this. Ian Northing on Twitter mentioned this, all the money. Let that sink in. Remember, folks, it's all about the ledger and what oils that ledger. XRP. This has to do with this article here, the DTCC processing $2.15 quadrillion in securities in 2019. And it's looking at, you guessed it, distributed ledger technology. Now, why this is important? I'll tell you why in a second. So the DTCC, which is the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, is an enormous operation providing the vast majority of clearing and settlement services for securities in the U.S. To put this into perspective, the DTCC processed $2.15 quadrillion. That's right, quadrillion dollars in securities during 2019. On a routine day, the DTCC is processing trillions of dollars in security transactions. For fintechs and digital innovation, DTCC is a key partner in the transformation process. Speaking at last year's DTCC fintech conference, uh, CEO Michael C. Bodson said, the potential of distributed ledger technology is undeniable, but wondered if its enormous power to transform financial services will ever be fully harnessed. And so right now, today, we're still in the early days, uh, and to assume that everything is going to run on DLT tomorrow is kind of naive to think. It takes time, it takes building, it takes confidence, and governments and central banks need to eventually have trust that it will work, need to trial it, then need to analyze the data and make their next move from there. Do we expand? Do we scale up? Yes or no, is this working for us? Another part of this is the competition in the private sector, right? Is my competition using this type of technology? Do I need to use this type of technology in order to compete on a level playing field? Yes or no? Analyze that data and move forward with that. And I think eventually we will see more distributed ledger technology usage uh, being rolled out all over the world. But why this is important, guys, why this is important, and I will link this article in the description for you, is this right here. This from Darren Moore, this is a video from Darren Moore, DTCC Research Ripple Integration to CLS Pay Plus for DTCC Trade Information Warehouse. Uh, now this uh, video from June 2019, so almost a year ago now, and these are his opinions based on the research he has done as to why he thinks DTTC could be running on Ripple already, or at least trialing them at this point in time. Uh, they do say in this current article that DTCC, it says down here back in May, DTCC said it was exploring the benefits of digitalization in the public and private markets. DTCC said it is looking to leverage blockchain or distributed ledger technology to possibly strengthen and post-trade processes and reduce risks and costs uh, and that their initiatives are contained by two case studies and that gives the names of those case studies. So they are certainly interested. Uh, Darren Moore's video from a year ago suggesting they could already be using it. So really, really great news, especially if we want to harness that $2.15 quadrillion in securities transactions and that's in just one year alone, guys. Think about Martin Volk's theory the other day about the oil sump and the engine and the car moving fast and how much XRP we are going to likely need in order for that demand to really organically grow. I think it'll grow bit by bit, but this is the kind of integration we need to see real world activity make those supply and demand numbers go out of whack. So thanks so much, Ian Northing, for posting that. Another tweet here from Michael at Val5Links on Twitter. Ripple CTO David Schwartz believes that a complaint about the Gemini exchange failing to list XRP, which was picked up by many members of the community last month, is dumb, according to the executive's recent tweet. So... UDOT today reported on this, and uh, it basically has to do with uh, David Schwartz talking about a criticism of the Gemini exchange. He says, that's quite a leap there. I'd like to hear you flesh out how exactly you get from SECS jurisdiction over market manipulation by a crypto exchange that lists lots, lots of low cap coins, but not XRP too. Ripple is a security. He is having a bit of a spat here with Tyler Winklevoss. Uh, nevertheless, he says, for the record, I still think it's a pretty dumb complaint. Sorry, but I cannot tell a lie. Um, here's the thing. There are a lot of people in the community that feel very precious, maybe I want to say about XRP and, you know, maybe get a little bent out of shape, uh, when a particular body says a particular thing about XRP in a way that they do not like. We always got to remain focused, guys. We always got to 
keep our eye on the prize, understand the use cases, do our own research, make the connections for yourself, understand what is really going on with Ripple the company and XRP the cryptocurrency, see how it can change the world, see what it's really being used for, understand ODL, why that's important today and how that's going to benefit XRP hodlers in the future. If there are a handful of things about XRP that I want you to remember, it's this. The fact that Brad Garlinghouse has gone on the record and said, and I keep saying this in my videos, he said this flat out, okay? Any cryptocurrency that will have value down the road will have to solve a problem. And so when asked about XRP price, he constantly uses that statement. XRP solves a problem, therefore it will be valuable down the road. He doesn't want to get into price. He doesn't know what the price is going to be, but he says any valuable cryptocurrency down the road will be a cryptocurrency that solves a problem. The other thing people at Ripple have said is that Ripple has an incentive for XRP to gain value. It is in their best interest. They want to target high cost payments one day. Right now they're targeting low cost payments through those ODL corridors. But eventually, this is baby steps guys, eventually they wanna target those high cost payments. So it is in their best interest for XRP to be valuable. So number one, XRP solves for a problem, therefore it should be valuable. Number two, Ripple is doing everything in their power to allow for XRP to be valuable. Those are two kind of main takeaways I always like to think about when there are conflicting opinions about XRP in the space. I always go back to that because yeah, it can get quite confusing sometimes. So anyway, I think I'll just leave it at that. And when confronted with the idea of selling fractions of shares of Ripple, David Schwartz is on board. Okay, guys, did you see this? This is from I Am Legion. Uh, at Joel Katz, are you planning to tokenize Ripple shares so that we can buy fractions of it at some point? Hashtag DeFi. Uh, the real block X uh, response here, I think that's been the plan all along. We just got to wait and see. Uh, and then there's always Sologenic as a workaround. Uh, David Schwartz does respond here. Ripple would either have to go public first, obviously, or holding would have to be limited to qualified investors. I would love to see that happen, he says. It would be incredibly cool. But there are a few mountains that we would have to move first. The Fist says, when you tokenize a share of stock, do those particular tokens become security? I would think yes, they do. And that's why Sologenic exists, says Panos Mech. The only way to acquire Ripple shares is privately through platforms like LinkToink. Link Toink, is that it? <laughs> also have to be an accredited investor uh, with a minimum buy, says I am Legion. So David Schwartz, uh, definitely down with this. And it sounds as though this is the direction they'd be moving in once Ripple shares go public. Right now, you cannot buy Ripple stock, unfortunately. It's held for accredited investors only, uh, people who privately invested in Ripple, the company. So it's not available on the stock market as of yet. But if when it does go public, David Schwartz says, you know what? He could see it happening. Of course, there are a few mounds to be moved first. I don't know if that means with regards to the idea of Ripple going public or the idea of the DeFi buying fractions of shares as I am Legion is mentioning. But anyway, thought that was cool. And guys, finally, you gotta remember on September 30th, 2020, it will be 1,000 days since XRP's all-time high of $3.84 on January 4th, 2018. And so it's only a matter of time before we see the crypto market rise once again. Remember, for those of you guys interested in Link or VET, or Tezos for that matter, I want to hear your one sentence pitch. I have my opinions about Link, VET, and the others. Real world utility is one thing for a lot of these coins, but that's going to happen down the road. But this next crypto pump is going to be spectacular, so it's important to have all your bases covered. Anyway, that's just my opinion, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.